The Royal Rumble 2020 kicked all kinds of ass, particularly in the two titular bouts. Both were exciting, well-booked marathons crammed with great character moments, storylines new and old, emerging stars and pure unfiltered emotion. But now, but now with the dust settling, it's probably about time to look at some of the wrestlers who are set to shine coming out of this incredible pay-per-view. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling and here are 10 wrestlers who deserve a big push after the Royal Rumble 2020. Number 10, Bianca Belair. The EST of NXT can take a well-deserved victory lap after that performance. Having successfully broken out after dominating the first half of the Women's Royal Rumble, Belair was a beast in there. Coming out at number two, eight women were knocked out of that match by her. She was granted plenty of shining moments and her power spots look pretty awesome too. On top of all this, she even proved her personality and charisma can fill a massive arena like Houston's Minute Maid Park. Bianca will challenge for Rhea Ripley's NXT Championship at TakeOver Portland next month. So failing there could mean landing on the red or blue brand in the near future where she could be treated as a massive, massive deal upon arrival. Those fans know her now. They know who she is, what she's capable of and why she's WWE's most exciting ground up developmental prospect in years. It's time to let her loose. Number nine, Keith Lee. Though Keith Lee's Royal Rumble run lasted, well, three and a half minutes, there's no shame in the way he went out. The limitless one was felled by the most dominant wrestler on the planet. Brock Lesnar is a terrifying force of nature and well established as WWE's end boss. So while Lee may indeed have benefited from a longer run with multiple eliminations, it's not like he was thrown out by Dolph Ziggler. The moment when Lee knocked Lesnar on his ass, it, it drew a mega pop in the arena. On top of this, he and Braun Strowman were pretty much utilized as effective roadblocks for the Beast Incarnate before the ultimate roadblock in Drew McIntyre emerged, and we'll get there later. And while your thoughts on Lee's run in the Rumble likely depend on your thoughts on Lesnar's run in the match, he played a role, and he played it well. Sending big beefy Keithy to the moon should still be an immediate priority. Number eight, Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes Martinez's wasn't the most newsworthy Rumble run as Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville threw her out after little over eight minutes. Regardless, it was a feel-good appearance, and one that should signal the start of something big for the veteran under the WWE banner. Mercedes became one of NXT's best working wrestlers the moment she signed on the dotted line, baby. And there shouldn't be anything stopping WWE from immediately establishing her as an alpha on the black and gold brand. She's a domineering ring general who projects more menace and credibility than almost anyone in her lane one hell of a worker and the perfect experienced vanguard for younger wrestlers to learn from. A gatekeeping role shouldn't come until much further down the line though. There are still titles to be chased and main events to be wrestled before then. Number seven, Ricochet. The only entry on this list to come from a negative place belongs to Ricochet, who should be thankful for his role in Brock Lesnar's elimination. Without it, he'd have left the bout looking close to useless, having mounted little in the way of successful offense outside of the aforementioned low blow. It's a bit high, but you get my point. WWE superhero hasn't been allowed to live up to that tag. Ricochet feels like just a guy at the moment, and that is an issue because a performer with his skill set should never feel like just a guy. He should be the easiest wrestler in the world to book, as all you really need to do is just loosen his restrictions and allow him to showcase the full breadth of high-flying talents that brought him to the dance in the first place, rather than serving him up as an appetizer for bigger stars and having him conform so rigidly to the methodical in-house style. Charisma could also be an issue here, but why can't Ricochet establish himself as an attention-grabbing upper mid-carder? He's amongst the best high-flyers on the planet, so just let him show it, Vince, please. Number six, Roman Reigns. It was pretty much impossible for fans not to cheer Roman Reigns during the King Corbin bout, so effective is the former lone wolf in his antagonist role. That isn't to take anything away from the big dog either, who has been great at drawing sympathy throughout this entire program, with these two factors combining to create a, a near-perfect face-heel dynamic in the pay-per-view opener. Reigns' rumble reactions weren't really quite as warm. His entrance was greeted with smatterings of jeers, and these intensified when he threw Edge out. Granted, whoever eliminated the rated R superstar was always going to get heat, and Roman's boos weren't at the building shaking decibels of old, but the contrasting responses suggested live crowds had made up their mind on Reigns. They like him as an upper mid-card babyface, but as a potential Royal Rumble winner, eh, 
perhaps not. Regardless, Roman has surfed his time away from the main event scene. WWE has smartly kept him away from the spotlight to minimize the post-combat backlash, but now, surely it's time to try this again and let him take on the Fiend at Mania. Right? Number 5, Shayna Baszler. The Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, came out at number 30, eliminated eight other competitors in under five minutes, and then went face to face with Charlotte Flair to close the bout out. The Oddsmaker's favorite was then surprisingly thrown out by the 10 time champion in a divisive moment that hasn't sat well at all. And the debate still rages on. Was this an example of WWE over pushing Charlotte at the expense of a rising star? Or have the company successfully worked their audience with an effective piece of baiting? Whatever the case, it's time Baszler made her presence felt on Raw or SmackDown. She's ready for this moment. She's been ready for it for a long, long time, in fact. And although the record-breaking former NXT champion is still being booked on Wednesday nights, Rhea Ripley rules that division now. It's time for Shayna to soar into a wider spotlight. Eight eliminations in roughly four minutes. That's gotta be capitalized on. Number four, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt was the best Fiend match yet. With its well-crafted hope spots adding an extra layer of drama that hasn't always been present in the Universal Champion's work since the gimmick change. It ruled. The horror movie monster looked as imposing as he should through his own brutish offense, and the lengths that Brian was willing to go through in order to put him away, with the strap-assisted yes lock looking particularly starting, only solidify Wyatt as a force unlike anything else in the company. This was the best we've seen of Bray as the Fiend. Still, it was hard to come away from the match without remembering that Brian, on his day, is the best wrestler in the company. And he was sublime here, with his spirited comebacks every bit as important to the bout's success as his opponent's gimmickry. Make no mistake, challenging for the Universal Championship on a Big Four pay-per-view is a great spot, but it needs to be built on after this Royal Rumble. A traditional slide back down the card just won't suffice. That isn't to say that Brian should take Bray's belt, but he should absolutely be playing a bigger role than he was prior to this feud, gold or no gold. Number three, Beth Phoenix. Shout out to NXT commentator Beth Phoenix, who once again dusted off her wrestling boots to step back inside of a WWE ring, looking more impressive than she has at any point since first returning at the 2018 Royal Rumble. That's not to say that Beth has been anywhere near close to bad in any of her appearances over the past few years. Whether she was staring down Santina Marella or teaming up with Natalia, Phoenix looked very good indeed and lasted an impressive 23 minutes out there before Shayna Baszler just bullied her over the top rope. Lord knows if Beth even wants to do one last run, but the opportunity is right there if she desires it. It's clear that she's far from a spent force between the ropes, and while the NXT role offers stability for years and years to come, there could be money between WWE's ropes, particularly if the company uses her as an established veteran presence to help younger wrestlers progress. Number two, Drew McIntyre. Well, yeah. Duh. Drew McIntyre became a made man in the 2020 Royal Rumble, eliminating Brock Lesnar by knocking the WWE Champion out of the ring with a concussive claymore drew one of the night's biggest pups. The Scotsman succeeded where 13 others failed, flattening the Beast Incarnate within seconds of entering the ring, setting him up for an immediate post-Rumble feud with Lesnar in the process. But it did not end there though. McIntyre went on to win the whole damn thing. Five more wrestlers fell by his hand, and now, after finally ascending to within touching distance of the mountain top, Drew looks to have finally done it. WWE's decision to let McIntyre cut loose and start showing more of his infectious personality a few weeks ago was a masterstroke. It made him feel like a big fan favorite heading into the pay per view, and now, coming out of it, Drew feels like the goddamn man. Number one, Edge. One of the most incredible comebacks in Royal Rumble history. Period. I'll say, one-off because recency bias is a very real thing. Edge's return is still sinking in and it'll take a while before his appearance at number 21 can be objectively judged against the event's other awesome surprises. Regardless of any of that, it was out of this world. The buzzer, the you think you know me, the altar bridge, the pop, the boundless energy as he leapt out of the tunnel and towards the crowd, the emotion on his face as he tried to steady himself, the spears, the rated RKO reunion, the eliminations, the relief, the hope, I need to calm down. It was perfect, absolutely perfect. Almost nine years after his last proper match, the rated R superstar is 
back. The medical experts have decreed him ready to go, so let's let's not mess around. Let's get this guy on a semi-regular schedule, working genuine dream matches with the likes of AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, and any other name you can think of, because I'm struggling because I'm just getting so excited. If played right, it could be one of the most memorable final runs this sport has ever seen. And I'm so ready for it. And that's our list. Anyone else you feel deserves a push after this year's Royal Rumble event? Then let us know who and why in the comments section below. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having the incredible day that you definitely deserve. And I'm sure I'm going to see you soon.